From the Church of Our Mother of Perpetual Help, we welcome you, the praying community from around the world, who are praying at this moment with us and Our Mother of Perpetual Help. We also celebrate today the precious gift of the Eucharist, the most holy body and blood of Christ that binds us as God's children, promising to all who believe eternal life. Although we come from all walks of life, traditions, cultures, lifestyles and have various languages, the Eucharist unites us because we profess and claim together. my Christus, and welcome to our Novena Devotion. Let's always remember everything that we do during the week and all the prayers, whether it's the rosary or the devotions, must lead us towards the Eucharist, towards the celebration of the body and blood of Christ. And so as we celebrate this feast, we begin in the Trinity, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are grateful to God for the many blessings we have received from Him to the prayers of our Mother of Perpetual Help. Let us once more ask her to pray with us and for us. The Feast of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ, or Corpus Christi, celebrates the Eucharist as the source and summit of life and mission of the Church. This feast is celebrated by Roman Catholics and other Christians to proclaim the truth of the transubstantiation of bread and wine into the actual body of Christ that we receive during Mass. It is a feast that marks our very long tradition, the thousands of years of Christian communities sharing the meal the Lord has given, the Last Supper, Jesus' meal with His apostles and followers. It is a feast of community, at the very essence of our Eucharistic faith is the belief that as the bread is blessed, broken and shed, we too, a broken and scattered people, become one in the sharing and it makes us a community in communion with Christ. We are called by the Eucharist to be the bread of Christ for the broken world. For this we pray. Be with us, O loving Mother. Today we have an urgent prayer request from Cardinal Charles Maung from Myanmar for the innocent civilians who were attacked 
because they sought refuge at Sacred Heart Church in Loikau. The violent act including shelling, using heavy weaponry, on a frightened group of largely women and children, resulting in the tragic deaths of four people and wounding more than eight. The church suffered extensive damage bearing witness to the intensity of the attack on the place of worship. The midnight attack made the helpless people to flee into the jungle. At the moment, they have no food or medical aid and their fate is uncertain as three weeks have gone by. This is a great humanitarian tragedy. Corrupt governments and leaders refuse to accept that places of worship are a cultural property of the community and is protected and covered by international protocols. We weep with the people of Myanmar for the deaths of hundreds of innocent lives brutally killed by the military junta, the backdoor government that seized power. We ask for the intercession of Mother Mary for the safety of our Myanmar sisters and brothers. Be with us, O loving Mother. Israel and Palestine is experiencing a truce and a ceasefire at the moment. Although the calm has been welcomed, most people know it probably means a countdown to the next inevitable conflict. Civilians on both sides have spoken of wanting to live without the fear of attack from the air. Both Hamas and Israel have claimed victory after the 11-day war. For about 14 years, Gaza has been under a blockade on its borders with Israel and Egypt that restricts the passage of people and goods, one of the main issues for any future mediation. We pray for healing and justice so that people can move forward to rebuild relationships, infrastructure and the economy. We also pray for the welfare and security of young people and children. Be with us, O loving Mother. Let us continue to pray for healing and recovery of Father Luke Fong of Singapore. May we trust God's infinite wisdom and be open and surrender our fears and doubts and leave everything beyond our control into the hands of the Lord. We pray with joyful hope. Be with us, O loving Mother. We offer up our prayers for the passing of His Eminence, Cornelius Cardinal Sim, Cardinal of the Apostolic Vicariat in Brunei, Jerusalem. In his final words at the Church of Our Lady of Assumption, before his departure, he encouraged Catholics to be active in the Church and make their participation much more tangible. Pray that the Church becomes stronger, the Cardinal said. Don't be a spectator in the Church. Be someone who contributes, gives time, talent and treasure. We join the faithful in Brunei in their grief. May the angels and saints of God lead him into the light and present him to God the Most High. For this we pray. Be with us, O loving Mother. We sum up all our petitions and united in prayer we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And now here are some of the letters of petitions and thanksgiving that you have sent to our parish. There were overwhelming number of letters, but we can only have time for a few. And here they are. Dearest Mother of Perpetual Help, 
My daughter is trying hard to conceive her first child. Please help her through this process. I will hope to attend Mass in your church in Malaysia when the pandemic is over. Please intercede in our prayers. Thank you from your loving daughter. Dear Mother Mary, I come to you with a humble request. Please heal my best friend's nephew and son from cancer. It's so sad to see a two-year-old boy suffering such a disease. Please intercede to Jesus for the cure, dear mother. Dear Mary, please pray for our neighborhood Christian community, the NCC member who was awarded to the NUC for swelling lymph node. The doctors will perform a CT scan and biopsy. We pray for a favorable result and complete healing for him. Jesus, I trust in you. Thank you from your grateful daughter. Mother Mary, help me to live a life in the spirit. I want to be on fire for Christ, saving souls, starting with my family. Help me to always be obedient, humble, and to love Christ. Dear Mother Mary, I ask for your intercession for my son and his fiancée. Due to the lockdown, my son is unable to travel to Malaysia to submit, to submit his form for his marriage registration physically. With the greatest confidence in you and your son Jesus, I place my humble request in your hands from your loving child. Dear Mary, I pray for the success of my proposal to be accepted by my clients and my company. The pandemic is not making things easy. Intercede, dear mother, from your grateful daughter. Dear Mother Mary, today my wife and I come to you again in desperation for our son's anxiety relapse. It is so painful to see him suffering and even more painful to feel helpless. We worry that my son will not have the support or the fortitude to overcome his mental condition when we are no longer around. Please intercede in our prayer for his future and well-being from your Catholic son and daughter. Dear Mother Mary, our daughter postponed her wedding plans twice in the United States and we have rebooked our flights many times since last year. We are in a dilemma because of the lackadaisical attitude of our home ministry with total lockdowns on travel and many rejections in our application to travel abroad. We are going to make another application against the odds and we ask for your intercession. Please help us, dear mother, so that we will be well and be able to have a joyful celebration in time to come from your loving daughter. And now for our Thanksgiving letters. Dear Mother, thank you for your unceasing prayers and intercessions. My cousin in New Zealand is recovering well after her chemotherapy and I'm well after my first dose of vaccine. However, my friends over 80 suffered side effects. Thank you for your presence in our lives and for the healing hands of Jesus from your grateful daughter. Mother Mary, the world is in a mess and my family is dysfunctional. Thank you always for being a source of help and for looking after my family members and for all the blessings we have received from our mother of perpetual help. I came to you in 2009 asking for your intercession for my eldest son. I was disappointed that he did badly for his PSLE and had to be streamed to a five-year secondary school. He had almost gone astray, ending up in a police station once. However, God answered our prayers in mysterious ways. My son finished his tertiary education and is now working for a major auditing firm. I'm ever so grateful and thank you from your grateful son. 
Dear Mother Mary, My son was awarded the SAF Young Leadership Award in 2021 and received 2,500 cash award. He will also be given the opportunity for a scholarship interview for overseas studies, as well as internship opportunities with MINDEF and SAF. Mother, I'm truly grateful and thankful for all that you have done from your grateful daughter. Dear Mother of Perpetual Help, we come in thanksgiving for His Eminence Cardinal Cornelius Sim, Apostolic Vicar of Brunei. He has done so much for the Catholic Church in this Muslim country. He was a brave witness to his faith and overcame many challenges in his life. We are truly grateful for his contribution and his perseverance. May God reward our Cardinal abundantly from the faithful parishioners from Brunei. Let's continue to turn to Mary with the prayer of confidence. Mother of perpetual help, we come to you and place our trust in you. You are a mother of mercy. You are called by all the refuge and the hope of sinners. Be then our refuge and our hope. Help us for the love of Jesus Christ. Stretch out your hand to us poor sinners. We bless and thank God for giving us this confidence in you. In the past, we have so often sinned, but with your help we can conquer, and you will help us if we pray to you. In all our temptations, may we always turn to you and say, Mary, help me. Let me never lose my God. Amen. Let us share with Mary her prayer of praise and thanksgiving to God. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He looks on his servant in her nothingness. Henceforth all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy is his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. He puts forth his arm in strength and scatters the proud hearted. He casts the mighty from their thrones and raises the lowly. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy, the mercy promised to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary, you are the mother of Christ. And you are our mother also. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you with all our heart for giving us Mary to be our mother. She's so loving, so thoughtful, so understanding and so kind. We thank you for her. Amen. As we dedicate this hymn to Mary, I invite all of you to sing this very old and lovely hymn together. Oh, come to the throne of grace.
lockdowns and quarantines had an amazing impact on Catholics, exposing their relationship with the Eucharist and how much they cherished the Mass. For the lapsed Catholics, it made no difference. But for the regular churchgoers, it was a disaster. They were lost every Sunday and never felt fulfilled, even with the online Masses. So let me share some random thoughts on the Eucharist as we celebrate the Feast of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ, or Corpus Christi. Someone asked me just the other day, Father, what goes on in your mind when you celebrate the Eucharist? It got me thinking over and over again that celebrating the Eucharist is not about me, but about the people. And everyone in the congregation matters to me whether they like me or not. The way I celebrate Mass is an indication of how much I reverence and value the sacrament. Have I become so familiar with the routine that I have lost the sense of its greatness? So much so that people fall asleep during Mass. As we read in today's Gospel about the First Eucharist, we also see that there was a lot of preparations involved. A suitable place had to be found, furnished and ready, and in that place preparations had to be made to receive Jesus. Sometimes my parishioners do not understand why I pay so much attention on the ambience in the church when we celebrate the Eucharist. Liturgical art and sacred music are very important, and every small detail enhances the beauty of the celebration. Sometimes it would mean improving the acoustics or the lightings, the room temperature, hospitality, incense and even the candles. As a presider, my heart needs to be prepared and made ready to receive Jesus. Do I take time to do this? I reflect on this today and I ask Jesus to give me a realization of the amazing gift that is given to me each time I celebrate at the Mass. And even my parishioners that come up to receive the communion minister to me the presence of Christ in them. It works both ways. As I give, I too receive from them the love of Christ and their gift of forgiveness and love. One of the phrases that really challenges me is not just the consecration prayer, but what Jesus said in the Gospel of St. John, unless you eat, unless you eat. It's not an option. And I say under bated breath, Lord, do you know the state that I am in? And Jesus knows, and that's why he says these words, unless you, Patrick, sinner, Eat this bread and drink of this cup. You will not have life in you. A very special kind of life that keeps me loving and forgiving until the very end. Unless you eat. With no conditions attached. Freely given. I have no other options. We have no other options except maybe to have the right disposition because we know what it cost Jesus to give himself to us. When I consume the body of Christ, God is one with me. It reminds me of Genesis when God said, do not eat of this fruit or you will die. And now Jesus reverses that promise and makes a new covenant so that sins may be forgiven and we inherit eternal life. For me, this is life changing in the Eucharist. And that's why the Church describes the Eucharist as the source and summit of Christian life. This means that Christian spirituality flows from the Eucharist, the source. And so Christian actions should be directed towards it, the summit. 
and you are that living body of Christ because you carry the presence of Jesus in everything that you do. You have received the body of Christ and you have the power of the Holy Spirit and God's grace to be transformed by it. I wish you all a wonderful feast of the precious and holy body and blood of Christ. Together, let's pray the Memorare. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help and sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To you I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Prayer for the Sick Lord Jesus Christ, you bore our sufferings and carried our sorrows. Hear our prayers for the sick. Help them to unite themselves with your sufferings, and if it is your will, may they get better. Let them never forget that you care for them. Amen. from heaven. Let us pray. O oh God, in this wonderful sacrament, you have left us a memorial of your passion. We ask you to enable us so to worship the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may constantly feel in our lives the effects of your redemption. You who live and reign forever and ever.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Blessed be God, blessed be His holy name, blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man, blessed be the name of Jesus, blessed be His most sacred heart, blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit of Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Amen. We are ever so grateful to all of you for being so faithful in coming in at this time to be with the praying community. I thank my staff. I thank everyone that has helped to make this novena your novena of choice. We end turning to Mary as you see this beautiful table before you. Someone baked the bread. And so we dedicate this hymn to the original baker woman. See you again.
your head 